In this video, we're going to talk about dependency injection. So what is dependency injection? It's a strategy where an object has its dependencies injected into it. The receiving object is called the client, and the object that is being injected is called the service. And that's the terminology that I'll use throughout this video. In simple terms, dependency injection is passing something that the client depends on in as arguments instead of either building the service itself or getting it from global scope. So you can see here that we have a client and a client can be something such as a controller. And then we have a service where we might import the service from another file. If we were to use dependency injection, we would simply inject the service in as arguments to the controller. And you can see here, we have an IOC container, and that is an inversion of control. An inversion of control is a way of getting your services to your clients. We're going to talk about it a little bit when we move on to the Nest.js example. So why would you use dependency injection? Well, the first reason is separation of concerns. It allows you to separate the use of a service from the construction of the service. The second reason is reusability. Services that are created outside of the client can be used anywhere. And the third and final reason, and probably the most popular reason, is testing. A mock service can easily be injected into the client during tests. And this is the example that I'm going to show you later on. So why would you not use dependency injection? Well, sometimes it can be more work. And you'll see that when we use Nest.js later on. Sometimes it can just be simpler to construct the service in the client. And sometimes it might move the logic to build services somewhere where it's harder to manage. So in this video, we're going to go over a simple example. And then finally, we're going to go over an example using Nest.js. So I have this controller here on the right. And in this controller, we have a user service. And the user service is just an object. And it's going to return a create user method. And the create user method is going to take a name. It's going to construct a user object. And it's going to push the user object onto the user's array. And then we have a create user controller. And the create user controller is going to call the user service .create user with the input name. And finally, we're just going to return the user. So you can see in our test here, we're requiring the user controller. We're going to create a user using the user controller. We're going to create a second user. And then we're just going to make sure that the user is equal to whatever the user controller is going to make for us. And this test works fine, but it has one crucial problem. How do we know what user service has been called with? In this case, there's no way to mock user service. If we're importing it from another file, we might be able to mock it, but that might be overly complicated. We can refactor this code using dependency injection to make testing this file a little bit easier. So we can take our user service here and we can move it over into our test. And then we can make our create user controller take a second argument of user service. Now, when we call our user controller, we just need to pass user service in. And our test should work the same. Let's run it. So you can see that our test is passing, but we've just opened up a whole new world of possibilities. So this is good. We should make sure that user is equal to this user. What about if instead of all this implementation detail, we just say that create user is a jest function and our jest function can take a name argument. And finally, it can return a new object and we're going to return name. And then we're just going to say ID is one. So you can see our test is still passing. Now we can make another assertion. So we can say expect user service dot create user dot to have been called with on the nth run. And we want to say it should first get called with a name of John. And then on the second run, you can see that we're calling it here with a name of Mark. So we can copy this test down, which is say it should get called with Mark on the second run. So now you can see by using dependency injection, we've managed to make our user controller much simpler, and we've managed to expand our tests to be much more robust. Let's have a look at dependency injection and how it works in Nest.js. So you can see I have this Nest.js application here and we have one module and this module is called user. And the files that we're interested in are user controller and user service and user module. The so user service is a service in dependency injection language. And you can see that we have this injectable decorator here. 
And this means that we can inject this service into anything we like. So if you have a look in our user controller here, you can see that user service is being injected into the constructor. But how does user service get into our user controller? Well, we use inversion of control. And you can see here, user module is in Nest.js an inversion of control container. And this is where we would register all of our providers so we can later inject them into other clients. And if we move up the dependency tree, you can see we have an app module here, which is also a inversion of control container. And we have our services and controllers that we can use throughout our application injected into this inversion of control container. So that is a basic overview of dependency injection. If you like this video, please let me know in the comment section below what design pattern you would like to see next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.